Two additions and one subtraction. Castile León today, Castile León today, has nine provinces. Nine provinces, okay, but we need to eliminate León. But we need to add two if we want to remember the old Castile from before. And what was it? Do you remember? Well, we had to add La Rioja, where they make the good wine, and we had to add Cantabria, then made tin. Cantabria, where the capital is Santander, that was part of old Castile. That was the port of Castile. So Castile was not landlocked. Cerrado en tierra sin acceso al mar. For example, Bolivia in South America is landlocked. Bolivia originally had part of the coast, but they lost it more than 140 years ago in a bitter war. Amar amargado, amargo, a bitter war with Chile. They lost their coast. And now, with permission of Chile, they can drive or move 100 miles to the Pacific coast. Now, Castile, old Castile didn't have this problem because the northern province of Cantabria, yes, that was the port of old Castile. Okay, but after we established that there are nine, that there are nine provinces in Castile León, then we moved to Extremadura. Remember, Extremadura is a landlocked region, but it has two provinces and two very beautiful, very interesting provinces, which are Cáceres and Badajoz. Okay, but Extremadura is a landlocked province, a region. It doesn't have access to the sea. The closest access is in Lisbon or in Huelva to the south. But it's interesting that this region of Spain, this landlocked region, produced 80% of all the great conquistadors who went to the New World and established a new world in South America and Central America and in the southern part of North America. Okay, Cortez was from Extremadura. He was from Medellin in Badajoz. Pizarro, who conquered Peru, who conquered the Inca Empire, was from Trujillo, an important and beautiful town in Cáceres. So there are two provinces in Cáceres, in, excuse me, in Extremadura, Cáceres and Badajoz. Then we established, finally, Murcia, as a province and region at the same time, and perhaps the most important province or region in agriculture, because Murcia receives the water from the Tagus River, El Tajo, that is sent by a special pipeline, un conducto de agua, from the province of Guadalajara in a small village in Guadalajara called Bolarque, very near Pastrana, there's a, an artificial lake or a reservoir on the Tagus River. And from that reservoir, they pump, bombean, they pump water up to the top of a tall, to a high hill. And from there, ooh, the water goes 400 kilometers to Murcia in order to provide water, in order to provide, con el fin de proveer o proporcionar, in order to provide water to an area traditionally very dry, but with the potential to produce a garden of agriculture. And the water from the Tagus has successfully been used to create a very rich, agriculture. And so maybe, I'm not sure, maybe Murcia is the number one province in Spain in agriculture. So we have up to now between Catalonia, the Balearic Islands, Galicia, Castile Leon, Andalusia, Extremadura, and Murcia, we have established 29 provinces. What other regions are there? Well, we have Castile La Mancha, La Mancha, Don Quixote, and Sancho Panza, they spent their time in the Mancha. It's relatively flat, and it's part of New Castile, or what today is called Castile-La Mancha. 
And how many provinces are there? I don't remember. I think there are six, but we can count them. Maybe there are only five. And what's the most important economic activity in Castilla-La Mancha? Probably agriculture, although there's a lot of important industry. And what's the most interesting province in Castilla-La Mancha? That's another good question. For me, perhaps Toledo. Toledo. Why? Because of the city of Toledo. Toledo is a very beautiful city. Toledo is a museum in itself. Un museo en sí mismo, en sí. It's a museum in itself. It's the convergence of three cultures, the Christian, the Islamic, and the Jewish cultures in Toledo. Have you ever been to Toledo? I have many times. But in Castilla-La Mancha, we have Toledo, we have Ciudad Real, we have Albacete, we have Cuenca, and we have Guadalajara. I think there are only five. Am I, am I forgetting a province? In Castilla-La Mancha, let's see. We have Toledo, and south of Toledo we have Ciudad Real, and to the west, excuse me, to the west, no, to the east of Ciudad Real, we have Albacete, isn't that we? And then north of Albacete we have Cuenca, and then a bit northwest of Cuenca we have Guadalajara. So I think there are five. Call me if you think I'm forgetting a province. So we have five. So added to the 29, sumados a, added to the 29 provinces from before, we now have 34 provinces. How many provinces are there in total? ¿Cómo se dice en total en inglés? How many provinces are there in all? In all in Spain. We don't normally say in total. It's correct. But we don't say in total. We say how many in all? How many provinces are there in all in Spain? Well, there are 50. How many have we covered so far? Hasta ahora. How many have we covered so far? Well, we have covered 34 out of the total of 50. Of the 50, we have covered 34. Or we have covered 34 out of the 50. And where are the rest of the provinces? Oh, well, in the north, there are several provinces we haven't covered. And some of these provinces are regions and provinces in themselves. One of the most beautiful regions in Spain, of course, is Asturias. Mountains, beaches, rivers, industry. Asturias is the most important region in Spain in coal mining. La extracción minera de carbón. Coal. Coal escrito. Pronunciation? Coal. It's like cold without the D. Coal. And there are a lot of coal mines in the mountains in Asturias. Nieres, La Felguera. There are a lot of coal mines there. But it's a very beautiful, very green. And the people drink cider. And the people eat fabada. The people are strong, yes. And they're fun people in Asturias. But Asturias is a province and a region. So it's only one. So adding Asturias, we have 35 provinces. What else? Well, we have Cantabria. Cantabria, which is next to Asturias. Is Cantabria east of Asturias or west of Asturias? Well, it's east of Asturias. In fact, Cantabria is between Asturias and the Basque Country. And what's the most important city in Cantabria? Well, the most important city is Santander. Have you ever been to Santander? It's one of the most beautiful coastal towns, in my opinion, in Europe. Very beautiful. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? What's the second most important town in uh, Cantabria? I don't know. Maybe it's Laredo. Maybe it's uh, Reynosa. I don't know. Okay. But with Cantabria, we add one more province. So that makes 36. And what province is just to the east, to the east of Cantabria? Well, it's the province of Vizcaya. Originally, many years ago, that was called the province of Bilbao. But it's the province of Vizcaya. 
And what's the most important activity? Uh, traditionally, steel, steel making. Bilbao is famous for the steel industry. And now it still produces steel. But the steel industry is not as important as it used to be. It used to be more important. Antes fue más importante. Now it's not as important as before. But it used to be important. Now, Vizcaya is not a region. There are three provinces. One is Vizcaya, another is Gispuzkoa, and another is Alava. And those three provinces make up the Basque country, or as the Basque, some Basque people call Euskadi. It makes up the Basque country. Okay? Notice how I say to make up. Three provinces, Vizcaya, Gipuzkoa, and Alava, constituyen or componen, make up the Basque country. So here we have three provinces, all of them very beautiful, especially Gipuzkoa and Vizcaya. So we have three more provinces, and that makes 39. Okay? Now, which one, in my opinion, is the most beautiful? I don't know. Maybe Gipuzkoa, because it includes the city of San Sebastian, which is probably one, of, like Santander in Cantabria, is one of the most beautiful coastal cities in Europe. But the camera people are telling me that I have to stop. I have one minute left. So we have covered 39 of the 50 provinces up to now, so far, Astora. So far, we have covered 39. I'll come back in one more class and we'll finish Spain and then we'll go to maybe the United States, maybe to France, who knows? We'll decide. But in the meantime, mientras tanto, in the meantime, study English, okay? And I'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back. Welcome again to uh, another intermediate lesson uh, in English. So, in two previous programs, you and I were talking about Spain. I was surprised because when I asked you the question, how many provinces are there in Spain, you didn't know. One person told me, 100? Another person said, no, about 30. And then I said, well, they're the same number of provinces in Spain as in the United States. Fijaos lo que, lo que acabo de decir. There are the same number of provinces in Spain as states in the United States. I'm using as. So remember, the same as. In Spanish, you don't say the same as. You say the same that. And many of you make a constant mistake with the same. You say the same than or the same that, que va, the same as, okay? So there are 50 provinces in Spain and 50 provinces in the U.S. or in the States or in the United States. Now, in the past two programs at the intermediate level, we were talking about, we were trying to count up, hacer un recuento, to count up all the provinces in Spain to make sure that there are, in fact, 50. I don't have a list in front of me. I'm doing it by heart, by memory. And I remembered, first, Catalonia, there are four. The Balear Balearic Islands is one. That makes five. Then we jumped to the west, to the northwest, and we covered Galicia, which is four. Lugo, Orense, Coruña, and Pontevedra. That makes nine. Then we added the eight provinces from Andalusia, from Huelva to Almería in the east, and that made 17. Y eso hizo 17. That made 17. And then we added the nine provinces from Castile León. We didn't forget any of them. We remembered Soria. We remembered León. We remembered Zamora. We didn't forget Palencia, nor Segovia nor Avila, nor Salamanca, nor Valladolid. We covered all of them. And so, adding the nine provinces from Castile León, that made 26. And then we added the two provinces from Extremadura. Yeah, remember? Yes, Cáceres and Badajoz. And if you remember, we mentioned the fact 
Mencionamos el hecho de que. We mentioned the fact that Extremadura is a landlocked province or region. It doesn't have access to the sea or to the ocean. However, we also mention the paradox, the paradoja, the paradox, con X al final. We mention the paradox that Extremadura, a region that is landlocked and traditionally poor, produced 80 or maybe even more, 80 or 90 percent of the great conquistadors who conquered the New World, crossing the ocean. It's strange. And when they came back, the first thing they did was to go to Guadalupe in the province of Cáceres to give thanks to the Virgin that they had arrived back in Spain safely. Okay, that's Extremadura. And we added those two provinces to the rest and that made 28. Then we went up to Asturias and we established, we talked about the mining, la minería, the coal mines, minas de carbón the coal mines, and we talked about the beauty of the province, and that added one, making 29. Then we added, we added the five provinces from Castilla-La Mancha, Toledo, Ciudad Real, Albacete, Cuenca, and Guadalajara, and we established, we added them, and that made 34. Okay, but if you remember, I was not sure. Concerning Castilla-La Mancha, I'm not sure if there are five or six. I could be forgetting a province. Am I? Am I forgetting a province? I said Toledo, Sierra Real, Albacete, Cuenca, and Guadalajara. But I'm not completely sure that I'm forgetting one or not. So I need your help on that. But then we continue to Murcia, a very important province for agriculture, perhaps, maybe, perhaps, maybe, the most important province in Spain in agriculture. Because every year it has four or five harvests, cosechas, of tomatoes, green peppers, red peppers, a lot of harvests because of it's very rich, but it's very dry and it receives water from the Tagus River. Tagus is El Tajo, from uh, Guadalajara down to Murcia through the Trasvase Tajo Segura. So, with the one province, because Murcia is a province and a region in itself, okay, so it's, we added one had 35, and then we added Cantabria, remember? The province next to Asturias, in which the capital is Santander, okay? And we added that to make 36. And finally, we went directly east from Cantabria to Biscaya. And we looked at Biscaya, in which Bilbao is the most important city. We looked at Guipuzcoa, in which, San, in which, in El Cual. We looked at Guipuzcoa, in which San Sebastian is the most important city. And finally, we looked at Ava, Alaba, in which Vitoria is the most important city. And Vitoria is the seat of government, the capital of the Basque Country. The politicians congregate in Alava, in Vitoria, the capital of Alava. And those three provinces make up, forman, constituyen, componen, make up, those three provinces make up the Basque Country, El País Vasco, the Basque Country. Okay? And so up to now, so far, we have counted 39 provinces. Now, I don't have a list. I think we will correctly reach 50, but I'm not sure. So what shall we look at next? Well, let's look at two different regions that are also individual provinces, okay? Because in 1975, 1976, and 1977, about 30 years ago, when Spain became a democracy, there were, there were, hubo in plural, there were a lot of debates about the final composition of the different regions, what you call in Spanish comunidades autonomos, autonomas, the different regions. And some, read, some provinces 
that had belonged to uh, large regions before preferred to be independent. Cantabria is one. Asturias is one. All right. But also Navarre and Rioja. All right. So Navarre, a kingdom. Navarre is a very old and famous kingdom, the kingdom of Navarre. And Navarre is a region now, a comunidad autónoma, and a province. And what's the capital? What's the most important city? Do you know? What's the most important city in Navarre? Well, of course, Pamplona. Famous for the running of the bulls, the running of the bulls, and famous for many other things. What's the second most important city in Navarre? Do you know? I'm not sure. Could it be, could it be Olite? Could it be Tafaya? Could it be Tudela? What's the second most important city? It's your decision. I don't really know. But Navarre is one additional province. So we add Navarre and we have 40. So we only have 10 left. Nos quedan 10 provincias que contar. We only have 10 provinces left to count because so far in the past two classes and in this class, we have established, we have counted up to, hemos contado hasta, up to, we have counted up to 40 provinces. Now, La Rioja, famous for its wine, of course. There's a lot of good wine in Rioja. Okay, now Rioja, the Rioja, or Rioja, used to belong to Old Castile. Do you understand? Castile la Vieja. Rioja used to be, used to be, antes fue, used to. Se escribe used to. But we don't say used to. We say used to. Used to. The pronunciation is very fast. Used to. And when you want to say, when you want to speak in the past tense about a fact or an action, a series of actions that took place in the past and you don't specify the time the duration, or you don't specify when, in which the only important fact is that today, no, now, no, we say used to. For example, I lived in Oklahoma from 1961 to 1970. It's, it's easy. Viví en Oklahoma desde el 61 hasta el año 70. I lived in Oklahoma from 1961 to 1970. I lived in Oklahoma for 10 years, 9 or 10 years. If I express the duration or the period of time, when, how long, I don't say used to. It's incorrect, for example, in English it's incorrect to say, I used to live in Oklahoma from 1961 to 1970. That's, that's not right. I can't say that. We use the simple past. I lived. Okay. Or when we specify the time, cuando yo viví en Oklahoma, when I lived in Oklahoma. We don't say when I used to live in Oklahoma. But, for example, if you say to me, Clovey, uh, next week I'm going to America. Oh, yeah? You're going to the States. Where? I'm going to visit um, Kansas and Oklahoma. Ah, Oklahoma. I used to live there. I used to live there. Okay, that's how we say it, because I'm not specifying the time, I'm not specifying the duration, or anything. I'm simply expressing the fact that at one period in the past, I lived there, but now, no. So when we use the expression used to, we're speaking in the past, and it's clear that it's not valid in the present. That's the only thing that's clear. I used to teach more hours. Se entiende que ahora te enseño menos. If I say, I used to be strong, then you understand that now I'm not. If I say, I used to be more intelligent, that now you understand that I'm less intelligent now. But I never say, I used to be more intelligent in the 1980s, in los años 80. That's incorrect English. Say, I was more intelligent in the 1980s. If you specify the time, past tense. If you don't, it's just used to. Okay. Used to. And the pronunciation is like el monasterio de juste. 
cambiando la E al final con U, used to. Si el monasterio tuviera otro nombre, si el monasterio used to, suena igual. I used to. Now, Rioja, La Rioja, the, the region, used to belong to Old Castile. La Rioja used to be a province of Old Castile. But in 1975 and 1976, when the Spanish Constitution was being established and a new arrangement of the geography of Spain and the political map of the country, La Rioja, perhaps because it's rich from the wine industry, richer than the other provinces.